the largest office building in the world is more famous for its shape than its size. The iconic five-sided headquarters is the nerve center of the world's most powerful military. But constructing this behemoth was a full-scale military mission of its own. After Hitler marched into Warsaw and then Paris, FDR declared a national emergency. I have tonight issued a proclamation that an unlimited national emergency exists and requires the strengthening of our defense to the extreme limit of our national power and authority. Washington, D.C., 1941. With war almost certain, the American military grew at an explosive rate. The United States was undergoing the largest peacetime mobilization in its history. The War Department in Washington was just scattered around in all these different buildings. There were War Department occupants in private residences. The War Department had simply outgrown its capacity. One Brigadier General proposed a bold plan to build a central military headquarters. His name was Brihon B. Somerville. His contemporaries described him as dynamic, certainly, but also impatient, even ruthless. But it was really that combination of traits that made him perfect for how monumental the task at hand was for him. I mean, he's one of these guys that you want to have around, keep in a glass case and, and just break it open in case of emergency. I mean, he just, <laughs> he was the right man for the job. On a rainy Thursday evening in July, Somerville gathered his team of construction division officers. He ordered them to draft plans for a building that could house 40,000 government employees under one roof. They didn't think that was possible. He wanted the plans on his desk Monday morning. You talk about shock and awe. I mean, his staff were just wide-eyed, so there was hardly time to even react. We're gonna do it in a hurry. I want people moving in within six months I want the whole building done within a year. As Somerville's staff worked around the clock that weekend, they realized that time was hardly their only obstacle. Impending steel shortages become a major problem as America's war production streamlines into high. The urgency of World War II was both something that helped push the building towards completion, but it also affected um, how it was built. To save steel, Somerville ordered the Pentagon top out at just four stories. A rectangular building wouldn't be a problem on a conventional lot, but they were given something else, land bounded by roads on five sides. The shape is, is completely really an accident of history. Why five sides? It fit. To get the square footage they needed on the lot they had, some of those team had to get creative. The complex, known as the Pentagon, would actually be five Pentagons nested inside each other, like a Russian doll. The concentric Pentagons would be connected by perpendicular passageways leading to a five-acre pentagonal courtyard. But just before they broke ground, the pentagonal lot itself, positioned near the sacred vista of Arlington Cemetery, set off a firestorm of protest. Opposition to the Pentagon building was about that location. The aesthetic disruption of that panoramic view, the newspapers lambasted the idea. Bowing to public pressure, Roosevelt forced Somerville to a different location further down the Potomac. This new plot didn't spoil the view of Arlington, and it wasn't restricted by access roads. So a more conventional rectangular building would fit, but time was short, so Somerville kept the original design. We have this design, it's this far along. We spent how many thousands of man hours trying to get it this far along? We're not gonna go backwards and revisit, it works. Incredibly, Somerville was able to cut through the red tape and break ground just seven weeks after the idea for the building was first hatched. Construction began on September 11th, 1941, and they faced their first big challenge on day one. It was on a floodplain, so very soggy, but the pilings that were set helped stabilize it, so it was usable. To support the foundation, they had to sink 41,000 concrete pilings for a building whose max capacity would be 40,000 people. You do the math. 
some of these piles would go on the ground and they'd sink and they'd disappear. They'd never be seen again. It was just, you know, it was like putting matchsticks into a, you know, a muddy football field. With the drumbeat of war sounding louder each day, Somerville brought out his top man to oversee construction, Colonel Leslie R. Groves. He could really be quite blunt and brusque, and uh, he was really a, a master of applying pressure on his subordinates. Groves was just a no-nonsense driver. Groves' logistical genius would prove indispensable to the project. By December 1st, 1941, Groves had 3,000 workers on site every day. But over in Europe, the Allies were depending on more and more American steel to fight the German war machine. Somerville was determined to save every scrap of steel he could. Every product essential to the conduct of the war must be examined in the light of two questions. Can it be made as well of some less critical material? Can it be made better, faster, or in greater quantities by some other method of production? Adapting to wartime demands, Somerville called for concrete, a lot of concrete. It was gonna involve concrete on a scale that had never been used for a building before. By working with concrete, they saved 38,000 tons of steel, enough to build a battleship, and just in time. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. 